Well, the long-awaited podcast is finally here. Uh, welcome to episode one of The Rent is Due, uh, featuring myself, Mr. Piva. We're going to go into a little bit of detail today. Uh, the first episode uh, is basically going to talk a little bit about me, a little bit about who I am, what I do, where I came from, and where I'm going. Um, we do have a couple of cool guests uh, lined up in the, in the near future for episodes two, three, and four. Uh, but the first one I kind of just wanted to get out of the way, uh, basically uh, letting people know who I am and, and what the objective of this podcast is. It is a real estate podcast, quote unquote, but we'll more or less get down to the fucking nitty gritty. Um, there will be a few F-bombs. <laughs> Um, that's just the part of, uh, a part of the language, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, especially with the guests that we, we do have on, we got some professional athletes, some crypto Kings. Uh, and then we just got the blue collar folk that, uh, that tells us, um, you know, the day to day life, uh, of a nine to five working man, father, husband, uh, shit that people can relate to. Um, I promise we won't be talking too much about market analytics and mortgage rates and all the bullshit you guys hear on a daily basis through these vlogs and podcasts. And I wanted to take this platform uh, for a different approach. Uh, I wanted to bring on some real people. Um, you know, obviously we'll have to we'll have to dabble a little bit into the real estate culture, uh, but I just wanted to have fun with it. I wanted uh, a voice to be heard. And uh, as most know, I like to just, you know, be real and speak basically what everyone's fucking thinking. Um, so with that being said, um, this is the first episode of the Rent is Due podcast. Oh, disappeared. Oof, that's a fucking understatement. But um, who I am, I'm Matt Piva, Mr. Piva. Um, I uh, grew up in Vaughan, Ontario. Uh, hockey was life. Um, growing up, uh, it, I had I had every child's dream. Um, you know, mom and dad, spoiled rotten, uh, pretty decent hockey player. Um, you know, as we got older, you know, did the whole OHL for five years. Uh, went to play pro in Italy. Uh, ventured off here, there, everywhere. Um, I was lucky enough to play with some of the best hockey players on the planet. Uh, a lot of them I was able to call lifelong friends. A lot of them I do have a very, a very good personal relationship with. Um, but it was weird because for those that do play hockey, you play one shift with a guy and it's, it's a brotherhood, right? You're fucking boys for life. Uh, and I've, you know, met the greatest people through the game. Um, and I still, I still meet people through the game. Uh, I do coach now. I coach minor hockey. A lot of friends and clients uh, do come um, from these platforms of coaching and you know networking. And that was one of the things, uh, one of the main reasons why I did get into real estate was because of my network. Uh, and someone always said, you know, your network is your net worth. And I wanted to find a career, something I was passionate about that I was able to utilize my network and, you know, evidently make some fucking money doing it while having a good time. So uh, I had a sports management company with a buddy of mine. I had a hockey school for several years, um, which we built from the ground up. Uh, very, very successful, but it got to a point where I needed more. I wanted more. And I know there's a lot of hockey parents listening, but Hockey parents, minor hockey parents are fucked. <laughs> Plain and simple. And if you say you're not, you're the most fucked up ones. Um, and it just, it got to a point where, you know, it just, it wasn't doing it for me anymore. The passion was kind of, you know, slowly leaking. There was just too much politics, too much bullshit. Uh, you know, everyone's Johnny and, and, and Joey are all going to the show on a first class ticket, uh, playing single A and double A and triple A and minor Adam and Adam. So... You know, dealing with that was the downfall of it. Um, it took definitely a toll on me. Um, and then, like I said, for the disappearance, um, you know, I got I got caught up. Uh, I got caught up with the the drugs and rock and roll, to say the least. Um, I battled uh, I battled addiction. And again, this is this is something that you know I I feel comfortable talking about now, which I never did. 
And there's a reason for me talking about this because I know a lot of fuckers are battling it every day of their life, whether it's at home, whether it's their marriage, whether it's their personal life, living double life, selling real estate, playing hockey, playing in the show, playing recreational fucking men's league. It don't matter. Um, a lot of people battle with addiction and unfortunately mental illness is one thing that I've realized firsthand that gets swept under the rug. And it's very unfortunate. Um, as I said previously, you know, addiction kills more people than cancer for a reason. And mental health is so fucked up how it works and how it takes over your life without you having zero control. And I dealt with that firsthand for many years. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I've hurt a lot of people. Um, I've ruined relationships, marriage, uh, family, uh, I've lost friends. Um, and this whole time, I thought I had everything fucking under control. And in saying this, the whole time um, I've been battling addiction, I've been a pretty successful realtor, um, which is fucking hard to think because there's days where I, I, I look back and I'm like, you know, people are like, how did you do it? I'm like, I have no fucking clue. I have no clue how I did it, but I did it. But like all things bad it catches up to you and it caught up to me very quick um, my addiction got a toll of my life and I was just an absolute tornado just a wrecking ball um, and I couldn't do it any longer um, as I said relationships were diminishing you know I went missing for a while clients couldn't get a hold of me clients wanting to put offers and I just cho chose the addiction over work I chose addiction over my marriage. Um, I chose addiction over my family, um, my friends, and you, I didn't care. Um, I didn't give a fuck about anything else. I didn't care about my life falling apart in front of me. Um, and you know, the depression, the, the, the suicidal thoughts, the anxiety, you know, that's, that's the smallest part of, of what I was dealing with. It was just the fact that I was witnessing my life crumble. Um, I was witnessing my life fall apart right in front of me. And not only did I not care, I just, I physically and mentally and emotionally couldn't do anything to stop it. Um, like most addicts, um, we lose the battle to addiction and, and I'm, I'm a walking proof of, you know, you, you don't realize what you got till it's gone. And, you know, I'm in full recovery now. I'm not celibate. I do have an occasional cocktail here and there, which, um, you know, never did anything for me. Um, but the whole, the whole selling real estate in addiction was, it was, it was the wildest thing because it was just one thing that led to another. And it was just double life that I was living. Um, and all the bullshit that comes with addiction, the lies, the manipulations, you know, the telling clients, you know, this and that. And, I did it and I'm not proud of it whatsoever. Um, but it's something that needs to be put out there because I know I'm not the first or the last person that fucking battles. Um, I've never been happier. Um, I'm about 125 days clean now. Um, I'm healthy, I'm happy. I've rekindled a lot of my relationships with my friends, um, family. Um, you know, I've, I, I've apologized to people that I didn't even know if I hurt, but you know, somewhere down the road in addiction, you don't even know what the fuck you're doing anymore. So chances were that people were affected, whether I knew it or not. Um, and for me to sit here, you know, as the first episode to this podcast, basically just explaining, you know, what I did and where I was and how I did it and what I'm doing with my last chance at life. So Instagram has always been a big platform for me. And this brings me back to your question, you know, where the fuck did I go? Um, two years ago, I probably, I probably sold about 30 million bucks just off Instagram. Um, you know, I kept it real. I would like to think as I was one of the original guys to kind of, you know, do the whole video skits. And again, nothing is or nothing was ever, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? was uh was scripted it was all just me being me and people liked it people didn't 
Um, the people that didn't, I really couldn't give a fuck to tell you the truth. It was just me. I was being real. Um, you know, I wanted to take a different approach, the outside of the box uh, approach on marketing and have fun with it. And, and the majority of my, my niche market really enjoyed the authenticity uh, of my content. And, you know, people see it. And again, I'm not a stupid guy. You see the people that, you know, try to take what you're doing and run with it and do that. But it's, it's not the same shit. It's so fucking fake. Um, and again, I'm not going to use this podcast or this platform to start, you know, calling out people and, and, you know, he said, she said, or, or all this bullshit, but it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, and you know what? I'll take it as a compliment. I'll take it as a compliment for the people trying to do, um, you know, the outside of the box thinking, uh, there's a million ways to produce content. Um, and I did it just with my listings. Um, I did it with my own material. I did it with my own thoughts, my own scripts, even though they weren't really scripted or ideas, I should say. Um, but there's, I mean, this is an industry of all smoke and fucking mirrors. Uh, and I'll go on the record, obviously, and say it. You know, people are very easy to read through. And I look back into when I was in addiction, um, regardless if it was real or not, I know people read right through me. Um, which you can never see. Uh, the whole Instagram thing, you'll never see a poor person. You'll never see an unhappy person. Every marriage you see on Instagram is picture perfect. Fucking Bonnie and Clyde. Um, you know, you don't see people battling. You don't hear about it. You know, you only see the inspirational quotes after the fact. Um, and I was always that guy that was fucking smoking mirrors. You know, 99% of the people would see my Instagram and say, holy fuck, this guy's so successful. He's happy. You know, he's this, he's, he's happily married, you know, you know, God, blah, 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 blah. But in reality, it was the fucking complete opposite. I was, uh, I was hurting. I was, um, I was bearing my pain in my addiction with more addiction. Um, and you get into the whole where you can't get out physically, mentally, or emotionally. It's physically impossible. And I speak to the other addict uh, or people that have dealt, you know, with immediate family members battling addiction. Um, it's unless you're an addict or you dealt with it firsthand or lost somebody to addiction, you'll never understand what the fuck goes through our heads. And it's all an optical illusion. Every day I used to wake up saying, oh, I got this, you know, knowing that, my marriage was in shambles. My family, my parents were in shambles. Um, what I was putting my wife through, what I was putting my family through, what I was putting my, 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 my office through, my brokerage, my friends, you know, parents that trusted me with their kids. Like, there was so much going on in my fucking head, let alone the financial instability because of the addiction. Um, and just you know, bills, debts, like everything just comes fucking crashing and the addict will wake up and just say everything is fine and go along with their addiction of a day, day in, day out and come home and, you know, battle to hold conversations with your wife and, you know, just basically being a piece of shit without being a piece of shit. Like I couldn't be deep down inside. I still, I, I know who I am today. Um, I know what I've been through. Um, and again, unfortunately, there was a lot of people hurt on the way. And, and many, many, many of them have shown me and given me their full forgiveness, which I am more than grateful for and more th appreciative than they'll ever know. Um, and basically allowing me back in their life to show them my last shot at life. Um, when people sit there and say, you know, I'm in the bottom of the dumpster, I'm at the bottom of the barrel, or I'm depressed, or I got, the, like, no, you're not. Like, you know, you might be, but you're not. Like, I sit there, and I don't wish what I was going through upon my worst enemy. Um, it, it's a 24-hour fucking melee every day, not knowing what's going on. Basically a walking zombie, just trying to function, but the functionality withers away. And you become non-functioning and your life is at stake all day, every day, whether it's with your drug of choice or, you know, whether it's your, your brain or the devil on your shoulder talking to you. I dealt with that for years. Um, and I 
just kind of swiped it off and brushed them, you know, away for the time being. And, and then on the come down, he just comes back even louder and his words start making more sense. And, and it was the most brutal thing that I've ever dealt with. And the reason why I wanted to start this podcast with, you know, an episode basically about myself and where I was, the hiatus I took from, from the world, whether it was Instagram or just my personal life, was just to let people know that you're not fucking alone. Uh, you're not alone. And this is hard to talk about. And again, this, this is the farthest thing from a, a, a cry for help. This is the farthest thing for attention seeking, as some of you may say. I don't give a fuck about that. I did. I did. I always wanted to be that guy, like looking for something and approval of other people, which 90% of those people I was looking for approval from aren't even in my life anymore. Um, you know, you, you, you realize who your real friends are. You realize who's got your back when you're going through what I went through. Um, yeah, I get it. Some people I hurt too much that, you know, unfortunately, I don't know if they'll ever be back in my life. And, and that's the fucking shittiest feeling where, you know, people are in pain on your expense and they want nothing to do with you, which is understandable. Yeah, time heals. Apologies are made. Um, but I've never... I've never apologized to apologize. Sorry was just a fucking word uh, that was used so freely and meant fuck all. And I'm building that back one day at a time where I can look in the mirror and, and be proud of who I am, which I never was. I used to cry myself to sleep. I used to cry in the mirror just staring at myself, not knowing who the fuck I was or what was, was I even going to come home that night or, you know, was this the last time, the last morning I could see my wife or see my family? Like, it's fucking crazy and it's real. Like, mental illness is no fucking joke. And again, I know I'm not the first or the last person battling, but like for those listening or watching, like, like I'm here for you. I feel your pain because I was there, if not worse. And I'm lucky to be here because I shouldn't be here talking. I, sh I should be fucking a goner. And for the sake of grace of my wife, she saved my life. And, you know, I went away for, for about 30 days to a, a world-class treatment center. Um, and again, you know, you hear these people, oh, it's 30 days. You need to go away for 100. And blah, blah, blah. you need to go away for five years. You need to go to fucking Sweden, Poland, Finland, Russia, fuck anywhere. All these people are telling you what you got to do but I've never fucking dealt with what I dealt with. Um, and like I said, I'm 125 days clean um, and I've never felt fucking better. I've never felt more proud. And not only do I see it in me, but my parents who are obviously, you know, two of the most important people um, that I owe my last chance at life to, um, you know, they've done everything for me and they, they've been with me from day one, you know, and you know, it gets emotional sometimes when I think about it because, like, I don't know any kid that, or son that put, would put their parents through what I did. And, you know, there's one chance, two chance, three chances, and every fucking time they were there for me, you know. And, yeah, there was some tough love. Uh, there was spurts where I didn't have the best relationship with them. But, you know... Again, it's, it's, I thank God for this last chance at life. And, you know, now that I have, you know, building the relationship I've always wanted with my parents, you know, it's, um, it's something that I could appreciate and things that I never were able to see because of my addiction. Um, it was always about the drugs. It was always about the addiction. That was the only thing I fucking cared about, which... It's so hard for me to say on this kind of platform and let the world know the world. There's probably fucking three people listening, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Hopefully the world one day. Um, but, uh, but I owe it to them. Um, I, I owe my life to them. And everybody, you know, you got to do it for yourself. Like, I'm doing it for myself regardless. Um, regardless if my wife is in my life or my parents. Like, I could never veer off this track that I'm on now. Um, I know it's still early uh, in recovery, but even on the work side of things, like I've never been more busy. I've never been more honest with my clients and my clients have seen that. And the ones that have forgiven me, 
I think I got a fucking splinter on my arm from this desk. Um, the ones that have forgiven me have thrown me so much fucking work. Um, just based on trust. I know I'm the best at what I do. And I made over a million dollars two years ago as a fucking full-blown addict selling real estate. And I probably lost, I don't even know how many deals because of my addiction, where I just couldn't function to fucking type an agreement on a, on a fucking laptop. And like, I sit there and I'm like, like, why, how? And they're, they're questions I'll never be able to answer because it's just like, you have no fucking idea on, oh, this thing fell one second here. It's all wrapped in my fucking shoe. There we go, we're back, <laughs> we're back in business, sorry. Um, you, you just, you, you have no idea on how to stop or how to control unless you get professional help. And that's exactly what I did. And again, I, I thank my wife for saving my life. Um, and I thank my clients for, for giving me this last opportunity, you know, to, um, to show them who I fucking really am. Show them the agent that they deserve. They pay a lot of money. They put, you know, their biggest investment in their life in my hands. Um, and I never, I've never fucked anybody over. I've never fucked any of my clients over. Um, you know, yeah, there's been lies and, you know, whatever it is. I mean, I'm sure there's people that lie to their clients, whether they got offers or, yeah, this, that. It's a part of the job. It's sales. Um, I don't do that anymore. I don't need to do that. People lie when they're scared. Um, and that was the biggest attribute of any addict is you're a liar. You're a compulsive liar. And I've been labeled that, you know, for most of my life, which is, probably one of the worst feelings or insults you know that you could be labeled as a fucking liar like you know trust everything goes out the window and over the last three four months i've done everything i can to prove to these people that i'm not that this is me i'm real i'm a fucking dude i know i am and people are seeing it slowly um people are seeing it slowly and this is another reason why I wanted to take this platform is, is to, to show people who the fuck I really am. Um, yeah, Matt Piva, yeah, Mr. Piva, yeah, I'm the addict. Uh, yeah, I was, you know, a couple years ago, probably one of the top producing agents in, in the GTA. And, and like I said, I did that in full addiction. So I, I'm excited. Uh, I look forward to waking up. I look forward to fucking going to work. I look forward to going to my office. I look forward to going to show my, my clients you know, potential future homes and listing their houses. Like, I fucking love it. Um, I absolutely love it. And, you know, to think about the past, I've forgotten about it. Actually, no, I shouldn't say I've forgotten about it. I can't forget about it, but I've let it go. Um, as most people did in my immediate circle, you, I, I let it go, but I will never forget about it, nor do I want to, because it holds me accountable. And accountability is something that I never fucking knew. I never knew what it was because I didn't care. Um, and now it's like, you know, when you feel the train kind of fucking veering off track, it's like, I think about the past and what I did and how much harm I've caused my family, my wife, my friends, my clients, you know, how much harm I literally, like I said, I almost took my own life um, a few times uh, just battling this fucking addiction. And I think about it and like, Nobody chooses that. Nobody chooses this life. Nobody chooses to put your mom and dad and your sister and your brother-in-law and your wife and your wife's family and your family and extended family and friends and clients and parents. and Like, I fucking put everybody at risk. Um, my addiction did. And, you know, nobody chooses that. Okay, the first drink you ever have or the first line of fucking blow you ever do or you know the first bet you ever put in or the first joint you ever smoke like that is a choice but once that drug of choice grabs you and puts you in a stranglehold like that choice turns into a fucking disease very very quickly and that disease will ruin your life or take your life either way there's no there's no positive outcome of being strangled by addiction and i am first fucking hand proof like i it, it had a stranglehold on me for life and i still try to put on that fucking fake smile and walk around like life is lollipops and rainbows or whatever the fuck the saying is uh but meanwhile that smile held so much pain 
that I couldn't do it anymore. And that smile gets very heavy and heavy and heavy. And it gets to a point where, you know, I don't even, I don't have to finish the story, but you know how these fucking stories end. It's, it's not good. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm back on the block. Uh, I'm back selling real estate. I'm back hustling. I'm back amending relationships, friendships, family, my marriage. I'm doing everything I fucking can uh, to prove the people hanging out in the weeds, the cockroaches, the snakes that I know are out there. Um, and there's a fuckload of them. I'll tell you that much. And they're the people that were the first people to smile and say, oh, congrats, you know, happy for you. You look good. You look good. Fuck off. Like, fuck right off. Um, it's free motivation for me because I truly know. And then there was people that messaged me or reached out to me that I knew were genuinely proud of me. And I haven't talked to them in years and they know who they are. And, and I've, and I, it's something that I will respect them for the rest of their lives, the rest of my life. But I know the people that are out there fucking, you know, giving me the clap. Meanwhile, giving me the fucking quarterly behind my back, which is like the, you know, whatever in Italian culture, it's, it ain't good. You don't want that. Um, but I see them. I see some, I see all the time and I laugh because now my smile is so genuine and they know it is. And they're so fucking frustrated because they never wanted to see me succeed. And even when I was very successful, which I'll be there very, very soon. I'll tell you right fucking now. Um, I know that they were just praying for my downfall and it's sad because as deep in addiction that I ever was, I never wished anything bad upon anybody, whether it was real estate, whether it was in hockey, whether it was, you know, friendships. Like, I know I'm a fucking great person. I know I'm a loving person. I'll give you the shirt off my back if I have one. Um, even, and when, but when I was battling, like, I couldn't, I couldn't offer that to people because I was so far gone. And, you know, friends were calling, like, you know, not, just to see how I was. You know, when I took that hiatus off Instagram, it was like red flags pop when you're this big re fucking real estate dude on Instagram and you got, you know, 12, 13,000 followers and you're pushing out content, sold there's videos. And then all of a sudden you go missing for eight months, nine months, like people knew. And I had people reach out to me on Instagram. Hey dude, hope you're well. Like, is everything okay? And I just couldn't even, I couldn't even respond to these people. Um, I couldn't even answer my phone friends call. I, I was famous for that, that fucking call you back uh, button on your phone. I must've pushed that fucking 30 times a day. Um, and now it's like when they call, like I'm excited, I'm excited to talk, like express myself kind of like I'm doing now because not only does it help me, but it helps others. And you know, whether, you know, the shit is around everywhere. It's 2000 and fucking 23. And you'll realize as you get older, two things in life. And I always say this is that cheese is fucking expensive and everyone does cocaine. It's everywhere or whatever, alcohol, or, you know, drugs, or it's so accessible in today's society, and you're never going to get away with it, unless you want to be locked up in your basement and, you know, leave your house, you know, an hour a day, you're, you're going to be around it all the time, and, and I've been out, I've been out and about, and I've been into situations where I knew I was walking into the lines, and where I knew drugs would be exposed, and, and, I wanted to go into these situations because I wanted to fucking test myself in a positive way. Um, you know, whether it's at work, colleagues, uh, clients, like, you know, obviously I ain't putting anybody on blast, but like people do it. It's facts of fucking life. People do drugs and a lot of them can do drugs and go home and be a good husband, be a good father, be a good brother, be a good son, be a good worker, be a good agent. I couldn't. And that's addiction where I any, I couldn't do things. I still can't do things in moderation. I either go all out or fucking nothing in anything I do. Now I'm addicted to a healthy lifestyle. I'm addicted to the gym. I'm addicted to being a good fucking person, which is, uh, it's an addiction in itself, which is an addiction I could live with. But I do everything. Like I'm at the gym every day, some days, two days. I haven't had a fucking carb or a plate of pasta or bread. And that for being an Italian is <laughs> nearly fucking impossible. But I'm doing it and I'm loving it and people around me that truly love me are seeing it. And when I hang out, I'm present, I'm alive, whether it's with my clients showing houses, you know, I'm, I'm there and I'm, and I'm fucking, and I'm me. And there's no better feeling than being alive and being present. And I was never able to see that. I was never able to do that.
until now, until I, you know, until I found sobriety and recovery. And it's a struggle. Don't kid yourself. You know, there's times where I sit there and I'm like, fuck, you know, what if I just tried this? Or if I could do one, I'll be fine. Like, I'm just, no, like, no. And I battle and I battle and I battle. But um, I'm stronger than I've ever been, not only physically, but mentally. And, you know, it's, again, I keep saying it, but it's the best fucking feeling. And again, I know, especially people that are very close to me, they battle. They battle the addiction side of life and they reach out to me and, and I love to help because it helps me as well. But just know, people listening, like if you're fucking battling the demons, you are not alone. Like you're not fucking alone at all. Like if I can do it, you can do it. And when I say that, I truly mean it because I never thought I would be sitting here talking this openly and freely about my past and my demons and, you know, the devil that I got the shit kicked out of me by. Like, I lost my battle to addiction. I gave up. I, def I was defeated. I threw in the white towel. I said, fuck off. You got me. You beat me. Congratulations. I'm another one on your fucking notch. Um, but now it's like, you know, he pops out and it's like, fuck off, dude. Like, I couldn't even be bothered. I couldn't care because, A, I've never been happier in life. And B, that drug fucking ruined my life and almost took my life more than once. Ruined marriages, ruined friendships, ruined family. Like, nah, man, I'm over it. I'm over it. And it's, you know, you listen to all these other podcasts and, you know, Theo Vaughn, shout out to my boy, Theo. Um, your tickets are way fucking overpriced anyway, by the way. But uh, I'm going to see him. And I listen to his podcast all the time, and he's in recovery as well, but he's just like the realest fucking dude. And he talks so openly about it and his stories. And again, obviously, I know that there's, you know, some kids and whatnot that I train that will probably listen to us, so I don't want to go into too many details, uh, nor does it matter at this point. Um, you know, a lot of my skeletons are out in the open now, which is another very good feeling. But it's just like he could talk about still functioning in recovery, Still being him, still being the funny guy, still hanging out with the boys, you know, still doing you, um, but just doing it fucking sober and clean. It's, it's, it's the best thing ever. Um, and I wouldn't change it for the fucking world, man. So um, life is good. Life is great. Um, yeah, there's still a lot that I got to learn. There's still a lot that I got to do. Um, I've never been busier with work. As I said, I got some big listings on the market. I got some big listings coming. I got some heavy duty sharks that are patrolling the fucking buying market. Um, and, uh, again, the, the finances come back very quick in this business. If you're hungry, if you're motivated, if you're focused and, and I've never been more. Um, so that's something I'm looking forward to. I'm excited for the future, which I never was. Obviously, if you're in addiction, you always live in the past. Um, you never saw the future because there was no future. But now it's like, you know, one day at a time, I got it, you know, I, I even got it tatted here on my wrist just to remind me, like, you know, I ain't the only one battling this one day at a time bullshit. And it works. It, it really does. And, um, yeah, just, like, just even now getting this shit off my chest, you know, it puts a fucking smile on my face. It makes me feel fuzzy and warm because... I know people are going to fucking listen to this and I know people are going to take what I'm saying and either reach out or go to a meeting or find help some way, somehow. And if I can help one fucking person, then I've done my job because people have helped me along the way. My treatment center has saved my life. My counselors, my therapists, you know, everyone, my family, my friends, um, and it's, and it's such a good feeling because when I was still in addiction and I was making the decision to get clean, you know, you talk to people that are one year, five years, 10 years, you know, clean. And they're like, God, dude, life is fucking beautiful. And you're so far gone. You, you're like, no, it's not. Like, I don't see it. I never will see it. Like, life is sucks. Life is. And the second you come on the other side, Regardless if you're one day or fucking 10 years clean, like you see what these people are talking about on how beautiful life is because you were so far gone. Your addiction 
took over your life and there was like you felt and I felt and I'm speaking for the attic that there was no way out which there isn't and you live like that every fucking day and it like the one day at a time motto is is so true in so many different aspects but I love it um as I said many times I'm extremely happy I still got holes in me obviously emotionally and you know, personal reasons and, and love life and, and all that. And there are holes that need to be filled. I'm hoping they will be filled with time. Um, but right now it's, you know, I got to worry about myself. Um, I've been selfish my entire life, as most addicts are. Um, and now I'm starting to be selfless, uh, which is another unbelievable feeling in itself. Um, where I can offer myself to others. I can offer help. I could offer, you know, talking, going back to work, like I could offer my clients the best version of myself, um, which I was never able to. And I appreciate them. I appreciate my clients and I hope the feeling is mutual, which I, which I think it is. And, um, life's all about being a good fucking guy and I'm doing it and I'm doing a hell of a fucking job at it. So with that being said, I mean, Again, this, this first episode of, uh, of The Rent is Due is more just to let people know where I was, let people know what I was battling, let people know what I battle, and let people know like what, what are the steps in the direction to live the life that's supposed to be lived. You know, addiction happens. It's going to happen. It's, it, it's inevitable. People battle. People lose their life. You know, people just go along with their day-to-day routines and full addiction, and it doesn't end the right way. It doesn't end the. It doesn't end in a good way, to say the least. So, I just wanted to come on here and explain, you know, the real world shit. You know, the the stuff that Instagram or TikTok don't fucking see. Um, the stuff that you know clients didn't see. The stuff that my friends and my wife and my parents never saw. Um, you know, there's no more smoke and mirrors with me. Uh, everything is all organic. Everything is all real. Everything is the truth. And I think this is the first step to me fucking taking over the world again. Like I was at the top and I'm not saying it in a cocky, arrogant way. It was just facts. Like I was a fucking rock star. I still am a rock star, but it was a lot in smoke and mirrors. Um, it was a rock star with an, a bad addiction. It was a rock star on a path of destruction, which ain't fucking healthy. Um, I've learned to appreciate the little things in life. Um, I've learned to appreciate my family. I've learned to appreciate my niece and my nephews. I've learned to appreciate my friends, my real friends anyway. Um, And never take that shit for fucking granted because, you know, sometimes you lose things and you might never get them back. And, and that's, uh, that's, the main thing that I've taken from recovery is, is just being an honest, being a real dude and being a good person. Like, fuck bro, your car broke down. I came to fucking pick you up. I would have never done that. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's just the little fucking things in life that, uh, that I'm grateful for, but I'm happy to be bringing this podcast to life. It's something that, um, that I wanted to do for a long time. Um, and I promise we will talk a little bit about real estate, Although I'm sure you could watch 5,000 other fucking podcasts or listen to podcasts that will tell you the same market stats and the same, you know, interest rates, interest rate heights and how's the market? Oh yeah, it's hot, it's cold, it's fucking lukewarm. Like who gives a fuck? Um, We'll bring on some guys and some girls, some guests, I should say. Forgot that we're 2023. You got to keep everything politically correct uh, with my gender neutral haircut. (laughs) Yeah, that's a Theo Vaughn line, by the way. Um, But my hair does look fucking incredible. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, we got some cool guests coming on. Um, we're rocking and rolling with gray media, uh, in a studio here. We're going to, uh, we're going to do like different stuff. Um, we're going to bring out some vlogs. Uh, we're going to do a day on the course, a day at the rink. We're going to bring some of the NHL boys on. Um, you know, we're going to have different locations, but uh, the podcast will be up and running. Um, I guess on, I don't even know. I'll, I'll put all the details, but I'm just getting the fucking hang of this. Uh, you know, on the iTunes and the podcasts and, and everywhere else you could listen. And, um, you know, we're going to start blowing up the TikTok and, um, and the Instagram will, will continue to run as it is. 
again, it's all me. Um, you know, everything is real. Um, everything is organic. Everything is true. And I just want to give the people what they want to hear. Uh, and I think it's gonna, we're going to have fun with it. And like I said, I'm going to have guys on that are, you know, just buddies that work the nine to five, that slave away with the fucking lunchbox and, you know, just talk about life, the ups and downs, being a father, being a mother, dealing with fucking little shits running around. And, and that's just the way life is. And people want to hear that. You know, I can't, uh, I can't just have rock stars and, and hockey players uh, on these pods. It's nice to hear the other side of things of the life in the rich and famous, which we will. But um, we're going to do things a little different here. Um, so with that being said, that's going uh, to finish up our first official podcast of The Rent is Due, hosted by yours truly, Mr. Piva. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, like I said, if you, if you guys ever you know, want to talk, my phone number is everywhere. My email is everywhere. Uh, reach out. I'm always in here. If I can help you, I will. And uh, have yourselves a fucking hell of a day until, uh, until next time. Adios.